Is it just me? Or is it getting crazier out there? White supremacists are stealing our okay signs and bowl cuts. People are being excommunicated for their political beliefs and Ellen DeGeneres is getting backlash for sitting next to George Bush. Yeah, it is certainly tense out there. And now they're even blaming a movie for an incel uprising. And as the world is falling, it is hard to know who is more crazy. Me? Or everyone else? In this episode of Please Don't Make a Scene, we review Joker. A clown for hire is struggling with his place in the world. He feels neglected by society, and he is slowly spiraling ever deeper into mental instability. I will try to steer this review away from the uh, political issues surrounding this movie. Not only are most of them wrong and redundant, I think, um, they're not really important to what I think of the movie. Um, Joker is not a political movie at all, really. The, the political messages in the movie are, are, are uh, deliberately muddled so as to fit the uh, narrative of a crazy man. What it is, though, I think, is a character study of a man that has been left behind by the world. He is mentally unstable, but the system can't help, or rather won't help, him. He struggles to fit in, and, you know, he tries to do the best to be a normal human being, but the harder he tries, the more he is separated from the rest of us, and the closer he gets to the edge, until one day he just snaps. I really liked Joker. It's not a 10 out of 10, as many people have said, because there are definitely some pacing issues toward the middle and the plot structure feels very heavy-handed. But overall, I really liked it. Unlike many comic book movies, most of them really, Joker is not trying to tell us an engaging story with a lot of twists and turns and exciting moments where the good guy squares off against the bad guy. Although, hopefully, no one was actually expecting that from this movie. This movie could have actually benefited from not being tied to the Joker character. It even feels sometimes like Todd Phillips and his writing partner Scott Silver were not thinking of Arthur Fleck as the Joker, but as a man slowly going insane. It could honestly have been called Arthur and the movie wouldn't have had to change that much at all. I do think that having the movie be called Joker and the movie being a Joker origin story and being tied to DC Comics, uh, even though it is a standalone film, I really hope they stick to that, is both a gift and a curse. Uh, the gift is uh, it, that it's more or less completely free from restrictions. They don't have to sell any toys or connect this movie to any other movies. This is not wor there are no there's no world building here other than what we need to tell the story. Because it exists only to tell the story it is telling which is my favorite kind of movie. Using the name Joker and having people connected to other DC movies or uh, Marvel movies or even just comic book movies in general makes people lower their expectations, which is, I guess, the curse in a way, but also part of the gift. It also helps to have Joaquin Phoenix play Arthur Fleck. While everyone in the movie gives a good performance, Zazie Beetz, uh, Shea Wiggum, Francis Conroy, Lee Gill, even Robert De Niro decided to show up and do a good job for the first time in years, uh, they all though f play second fiddle to Phoenix, uh, who does a phenomenal job. He brings so much physicality to the part, not just a weight loss thing, because we're almost like expecting that nowadays when you do a, a, a character role like this. Oh, you either, you either gain a bunch of weight or lose a bunch of weight. But it's more his 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 uh, his, his battered personality, the, the, his stature and his gait. He truly 100% embodies Arthur and, and, and chews the scenery just enough to make you feel uncomfortable with a lot of the things he does in the movie, but he doesn't take it as far as to make it ridiculous. Like, no one was laughing when I saw the movie, except a few scenes where we are supposed to laugh. And the director, uh, Todd Phillips, really feels at home with this kind of material. Because even if he is mostly known for making comedies, you know, the, the Hangover movies, uh, Due Date, uh, producing Project X, if you remember that one, 
Um, his movies have always had a inherent cynicism and almost darkness in them. The Hangover movies, especially number two and three, are not really comedies. Sure, we laugh at them, but it's only because they're so dark and uncomfortable. Uh, murder, mutilation, blackmail, kidnapping, extortion... Uh, th these are not things we usually um, think of when we think about comedies, but they're all in many of Todd Phillips' movies. It becomes even more apparent when you look at his earliest work, uh, Hated, a documentary about the avant-garde artist and uh, punk rock legend Gigi Allen, and uh, Frat House, an expose on the hazing culture on American college campuses. You guys sick of sucking dick? Yes, sir! Are you guys gonna suck any more dick no, after this night? Sir. Todd Phillips does not seem to think highly of humanity, and it definitely shows in Joker. Once again though, he's not the best scriptwriter, and the, the script makes Arthur feel a little too on the nose from time to time. But then you have Joaquin Phoenix there to rein it in and make it believable. So they really work very well in tandem. And we don't really expect complex characterizations of these kind of themes from comic book movies. I mean, comparing this to Aquaman or uh, uh, Captain America Civil War, uh, Joker just blows those kind of movies out of the water. Not for everyone. Remember that this is just my opinion on things. I know Scorsese recently got slammed for discrediting Marvel movies and calling them, you know, saying that they're not cinema. And I'm not saying that. Well, I, I kind of am. But I am not discrediting Marvel movies or Marvel movie fans. <laughs> well, I, I kind of am. Sorry. But judging Joker, not as a comic book movie, and putting it up against other movies that I really liked this year, like uh, uh, Pain and Glory or, or Standoff at Sparrow Creek, you should uh, check out that review up here, or Dragged Across Concrete, Joker falls a little short. Like I mentioned before, it is a very blunt movie. Certain plot points that could have benefited from being left a little more ambiguous are just it, plainly explained to us right out. Here it is. This is what we thought. This is perhaps done because the movie was made for a general audience, you know, the people that like Marvel movies. And maybe that is also why Todd Phillips really pours on the tragedy of Arthur Flex, and it becomes a little too obvious that the world is against him, almost to the point where the audience can start sympathizing a little too much. Because one of the criticisms that the movie did get was that it glorified violence and that it turns a usually homicidal maniac, that the Joker usually is portrayed as, uh, turned it into a somewhat sympathetic character. And the movie does this, definitely. I found myself siding with Arthur Fleck many times, even after he starts doing some wrong things. And that turns pretty quickly though when he continues to spiral further down and his actions become more and more insane, basically. But I can see some people actually rooting for Arthur all the way to the end. Now, do I think the movie needs to be censored, or should be shut down, or that the filmmakers are being irresponsible because of this? No, not at all. This is what filmmaking is about. It's about challenging the audiences. Sympathetic bad guys is nothing new in cinema. Uh, look at movies like uh, Taxi Driver and The King of Comedy, two movies that clearly inspire Joker. Both now considered classics, but at least one of them being um, discussed in similar ways when it came out. And it's both movies about, you know, unstable people that go too far. Or look at a little a little newer, I suppose, uh, Falling Down. A movie where we are clearly supposed to sympathize with the protagonist, even though he does some truly questionable things towards the end. Or, or, or take uh, Dragged Across Concrete, which I just mentioned before. Um, a movie where racist and misogynist cops are our protagonists. Th these movies, just like Joker, uh, challenges the audience to not condone the actions of our protagonists, but understand why they do them and what got them to this point. Or if we, as, as an audience, actually sympathize with them, make us think why we do that and how we got to this point. I find 
that, like I said, very, very interesting. It's interesting to think about things. It's inter- it's interesting when movies make you think about stuff. And it's not just a, 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 a nice, relaxing, but still entertaining, you know, action romp. I like those movies too, but I, I really enjoy when a movie makes me think. And I'm glad that movies like this can actually still exist in the mainstream cinema of today. Even if you have to call them comic book movies and add those add those little references to, to make it feel like a comic book movie, even though it, it, it really isn't a comic book movie. Because sometimes we do need to feel just a little bit uncomfortable when we're watching movies. We need to come face to face with the darkness that exists all around us, but that we shield ourselves from with social media and outrageous news stories about bowl cuts and okay signs. We invent these safe dangers so that we don't want to deal with what's really out there. And this is what Joker is all about, really. It's about showing us what's really going on, what we really need to think about. Now, Joker may not be a so- perfect social commentary, but it at least tries to tell a different kind of story. It shows us a different side of humanity and shows us that the difference between sanity and insanity is just one bad day. Oh, and if you're wondering, uh, Heath Ledger's Joker is still the best Joker portrayal. You know. Joaquin Phoenix was good, but he ain't no Heath Ledger. But that's that. Thank you for watching. Um, please uh, tell me what you thought of the movie in the comments below. Um, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you disliked it, give it a thumbs down and leave some constructive criticism in the comments. Uh, but if you did like it and you want to see more movie reviews like this or analyses, uh, uh, podcast, live streams, even trailer reactions I do from time to time, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the little bell thing so you're always updated when I release a new video. But until next time, have a good one.